Hello, 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 and welcome to another episode of Crazy Town Gaming. My name is Jonathan, I'm your host, and I'm here with TNT Dynamite, the explosive one. Jonas, we are the man on the, you are the man on the stick. I'm the man on the stick. We're playing, we're playing games 20. together too much. We're playing Madden 20. 20 ish. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, dude. We're doing brownie brown browns. The brownsters, Jonas. All yep. right, Jonas. Like, uh, we do these videos a lot. Right? Do we? Yeah. I mean, how long does it take to do like 2,000 what, what videos? <laughs> I'm not breaking up with you. Jeez, <laughs> calm down. We got a lot of good times, dude. <laughs> what do you mean? I mean, does it take you a lot out of your day? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Do you need do you need some more? Do you need to do do you need to do something? Yeah, really, that was a rhetorical question. Yeah. So, all right. So we do these videos a lot. <laughs> <laughs> and, and we very seldom get into like some some real life stuff that happens with us. You, we 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 we're pretty guarded. Guarded well, and about we it. We try to make light of everything, even if it is something going on with us. Well, yeah, you know, I'm gonna talk about something that happened to me that was just kind of like an eye opening experience oh for me. Oh my god! Woo! I'm ready for this. I'm glad you did this on like the third video in because if you did it on the first one, I wasn't quite awake yet. But now I can like fully process what you're saying. So okay, okay, yeah, we've had our fun. We've talked about animals and elderly and now coronavirus and now, stuff. Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 we've, we've talked about all that a stuff. lot and probably some other stuff in between. All right, so TNT Dynamite does healthcare for people in their homes, their personal homes. Oh, you're that's, getting into like real life. That's all I'm going to talk about. Okay. So I I go into families' homes and I provide a, a service for their their sick relatives or right. or whatever may, the case may be. Right. There is a ill person in the home. Yes. And you're there helping. So I recently started working for a family, and they are Caucasian. And I've been working there for a set number of time to the point where we have a relationship with each other. We trust each other. We know each other. Right. You have a good rapport. You've built up. It, like, yeah, 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 yeah. We built a rapport. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, I was speaking to the fraternal <laughs> portion of this family, the father, I guess. Okay. And uh, we start talking and we're just chatting. And then he's like, yeah, my... My wife was a little concerned when when you first got here. I was like, dude, I already understand. I'm six foot three. I am African American. I'm black. <laughs> I'm a scary looking dude. <laughs> you hear gray grass? I know. I, I I get it. I'm I'm six foot. I'm a big black dude. <laughs> I get it. <laughs> like, <laughs> but then then he started getting more into specifics. Oh no! And he was like, yeah, my wife comes to me and she's like. Honey, there's this big black dude in my house, and you're just gonna go to work? And he was like, "Uh, yeah." Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he was, and then he was like, and he was like, she was so nervous, and she was just like watching the cameras to make sure. He was like, he's just sitting there over the crib. I don't know what to, oh, I don't know what to do. He's just sitting there and watching, and I don't know what to do. And I'm like, oh, really? <laughs> so really nervous, right? Well, yeah. Because of why? Because I was a guy. Because I was in the house, or because I was a big black guy in the house. Jesus. Yeah, man. Yeah. Changed your. Uh, yeah, man. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Like, because I know you were like, oh, they're not too bad. You know, like we talk. We yeah. And the most surprising part is like, usually you're like. I think they got some tendencies, you know, or you can yeah. recognize that, like, they may have some sort of, like, prejudice. Yes, man. Yes. And you hadn't mentioned that at all about. No, man. <laughs> wow. No. You know, it, it's, it's, yeah, you know, and I, I guess I should have expected it because, like, <laughs> you know, you when you can walk into a person's house and you can just tell they're a Republican. <laughs> <laughs> The saddest part of all of that is I know what you're talking about. You can just walk into a person's house and tell that they have never heard a rap lyric in their entire life. Like, <laughs> they just they shudder at the thought of a Little Wayne song. Like and like you can tell they have like yeah all sorts of stuff like that. Uh, yeah, yeah, and and I'm not gonna say is that like. Like, I would feel remiss if I were to say, like, I feel like I encountered some racism. Because I don't really feel like I did. Even though, 
like the racist ideas led them to this irrational fear. Right. It's more like that irrational fear is what leads a lot of people to racism. Yeah, well, it's, um, I think sometimes, a lot of times, it's people, some people are so sheltered and they have never interacted with, oh, like, yeah. you know, a yes. type of race or any, you know, Absolutely. So, so all they know is stereotypes. Yeah. And they're bad, bad stereotypes. And, uh, like, yeah, it's, uh, one of the wisest things I ever heard is that the end to racism is immersion. Because if I were to put, a a white kid or a white group of kids into a black school and they were there over time those racist stereotypes are going to end they're just going to be like man these are just people they right. t- they, do we talk a little different from each other yeah whatever but it's all it's all english it's not like you can't understand right. what right. the other side is saying right unless you get like too deep into vocabulary or too deep into a, a subliminal on the other end um yeah, but immersion is 100%. You've yeah. been hanging out with me long enough where I know you're not racist. <laughs> right. I've vetted you 100 times. I've tried. Yeah, I've tried. You've got I've like tried the, to pull it out of you. Yeah, you got like the first three letters of the N-word out of your mouth oh, that one time. That one time. <laughs> yeah. Get out of here. Uh, but no, I, I agree a thousand percent because, in the, you know, it's funny because you'll watch like interviews with like former KKK members and stuff yeah. and they'll be like you know once i got out and started hanging around people of different races and whatever i realized everybody's just hey, there's nice dude. people everywhere and you're like well no shit dude <laughs> <laughs> yes not me this time well dude that's I, it always comes out when i'm talking about something i'm passionate about <laughs> only when i'm scared right <laughs> and uh you know, it's like, well, no crap, dude. Like, if you would have, like, not been so bigoted and, like, got around people, yeah. you would have realized yeah. there's there's just as bad white people as there are any other race if you're racist. And a you're, you know, thousand percent. Right? It's like, a thousand percent. Yeah, it's it's trash people are trash people. It doesn't yeah. matter what color your skin is. Like, that, that is 100 percent the truth. Yeah. One hundred percent true. Yeah, for sure. So that that then, sucks, dude. That's well, you know, I'm like that disappoints me. It dis- it disappointed me too. I had really that. Did. Yeah, because I mean, like, they had done some nice things for you, and you said they used some nice conversations and everything. Yeah, and like, I ended up talking to the to this man for three and a half hours the other day. Oh wow, really? He got real comfortable. Real yeah, like comfortable. You talked to anyone besides me, bro. The dude. <laughs> It was, it was like, I ain't gonna say it was by choice. <laughs> it, this was just called like building my social network. All right, it was right. all it was all outreach for you know future future endeavors. Right, man. right, yeah, I feel you. It's, rubbing <laughs> elbows, so to speak. Exactly, you know, just touching base and rubbing elbows. But uh, yeah, man, it was interesting. Uh, you know, like I feel like. All right, Jonas. This is this is this is this is this is, this is you can utilize this for yourself as well. Okay. I find that when a when a Caucasian individual is that okay to say? I don't want to. I, don't. <laughs> I, don't. I I am like never offended. You can say okay. anything you want. All right. So when a white mf'er, <laughs> meets, when a honky. <laughs> hold on. <laughs> I got him, folks. I got, I got him. Don't, don't, don't use that term. <laughs> I like when I say it, you get uncomfortable. <laughs> All right. So when a white mother effer meets a black person, and then in general conversation, they decide to tell they decide to tell a story about how they had a black friend in in junior high or something. I feel like that is the sure sign that you don't know <laughs> you don't know how to interact. Oh yeah, oh I agree. Because or if you feel the need to identify the race of a person in a story you're telling, period, it don't matter what race they are. It's yeah. a man or a woman. It's just like they'll sit up there and be like, you know, uh, I had a black friend. He was a big black dude, and uh, he lived next door to me, and we would hang out all the time. We'd smoke cigarettes on the back porch, and I'm like, dude, what, what are you trying to tell me? <laughs> like, who cares? I don't care about your friends <laughs> right. with some oh, other no, black I, dude. I, dude. I'm it, myself. <laughs> and I think that's an anxiety thing. For it, people. It, it may be. I think it is because they're, they, they're, like, uncomfortable. It may be. You know, I think it's... It, I, and I don't know. And I, I couldn't imagine doing... I don't know. I, I guess I'm just... We, I'm different to the fact that like yeah it's like i mean i'm just like yeah there was okay. this dude and blah 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 and like it doesn't no. matter to me if he's white black chinese like i don't give a crap like no you you make a valid point it's not necessarily 
Uh, well, I feel like it is kind of a pandering type of thing. Like the same idea with like if I jump into a car with a group of white people and they automatically put like the one rap CD that they have in. I'm like, dude, just play whatever. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care. Right. I've lived in America long enough where I understand. It's all right. If you want to listen to Michael Bublé, cool. <laughs> we'll Bublé it up all yeah. night. Don't be putting in your old Tupac CD just because I got in the car, right? <laughs> He's like, this one was good when I was in high school. <laughs> hey, how do you feel about this one, TNT? Like, suck my D. All right. Um, but it's not a pandering thing. It's kind of just like it, you're trying to make us feel comfortable. I guess. I, it's like a social anxiety, yeah, maybe okay. or something. Okay, okay. Like, and, that, and that's that, and then that's, I'm not as offended. <laughs> it's not like they're doing it because they're like, oh, I need to make sure this guy knows I had a black friend. But like, mm. I think a lot. Sometimes it's just I don't know. Like, right. But I, you hear people. I hear people do that a lot. Like, but I'll even hear yeah, like, even like yes. I'll even hear like a black guy or a Hispanic guy be like, oh, "I was hanging out with this one white dude," and you know what I mean? That, like, oh, you will never hear me say that. No, I'll never hear you say that. But I've heard yeah. Hispanic people and black people say that sort of thing. Like, oh, I was hanging out with this one white dude, and he was like, "The only time I'm going to delineate the race of a person is when some bull crap like this." <laughs> right? Exactly. Right. Oh, I feel you. I'm the same way, dude. Like I don't this. think I've ever been like. Oh, I was hanging out with this Hispanic guy. Like, it just sounds ignorant to say that to me. I don't know why. I, I just don't. I just don't understand, like, the irrational fear. Like, I'm a professional. I'm in your. You home. were sent there by a medical company, right? Do you like, not think I was vetted to some degree? <laughs> they just like you walked in, and go, I'll take care of people, and they're like, okay. Yeah. <laughs> like you have a licensure through like Like, like think about if you were to have anybody come into your home to take care of a sick loved one, what questions you would ask that person and then give me the furnish me the same respect to ask me those questions. If it was a woman who came in, you'd be like, Well, what's your name? How are you? What do, what do you do? How uh, like just have a conversation, and right. you can quickly pers- gauge a person's level of intelligence and what what their uh, what whatever implications that you need from that imp- that person to perform their duties. Why couldn't you do that with me? Because you were nervous. You were too focused on size, skin color. Uh, I don't know what other factors or triggers for this individual that they that causes them fear, but it's just that you're too focused on those things to just realize that if you have a conversation, that you can right. you can alleviate and that, all I mean, I of those. That's the general those problem words. with racism in the in America, or anywhere I guess, not just America, is that people don't it's like if yeah if you do if you if you have a fear or a whatever. And you sit down and just talk to someone, you'll realize soon enough that Yo. everybody's the freaking same, and it Yo. doesn't matter what, what <laughs> skin color, sex, anything you are, it, everyone's just the same. It's just it's just a little nuts to me, man. And, oh, I get it. And now, even looking back on it, it's like uh, when I was having conversations with a, the, a paternal unit, there was a lot of conversation about how he used to get in bar fights and how he's, wow. he I broke this one dude's arm. Was he trying to say it's like, you trying to think I'll beat you? <laughs> I don't uh, know. I don't know. There's so much. Like, I, look, I know how I talk to people, and it's to manipulate you, a lot uh, of yeah, times. I was going to say, you socially engineer all the time. Yes. So Was he trying to socially engineer you? Exactly. Were you trying to tell me that you could fight? Like, I don't were you know. trying to say my wife was scared of you, but don't you worry. I'll be able to protect this house if yeah, I need to. Yeah, like, man. <laughs> telling me about your guns and that house and stuff look i know it's texas everybody got guns you're like did your i wish a mother would pop off in your head at all oh man i keep it cool calm and collected i told like when you're in a professional i was like hey look my dude i was in the chess club (laughs) i was in show choir (laughs) (laughs) i told him all of that i'm not here look it's look if you want to play that whole male dominance game we can do that i'm not gonna do that on the clock Right. Right, you right. want to come at me with I'll break your arm and I'll whoop your whatever. You can say that. I'm on the clock. All right? right. When I'm off the clock, yeah, come and bring it, fam. <laughs> come, come and bring it. Come bring I broke You your better arm. bring a gun. <laughs> <laughs> you better. I hope you do. I hope. Wow, I wish a mother would. Exactly. I hope you do bring a gun. Because <laughs> that's the only way. Alright? Wow. Yo, I ain't scared of nobody. <laughs> the hubris. <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not afraid. I ain't even the fighter guy, but I ain't scared. You gonna have to. Keep. You know, just because I don't like to fight, don't mean I'm scared of people. <laughs> you dang right. 
Because that fe- mm, nah, I have no natural predators in the wild. None. Yeah, I uh, I think I the you big, the I'm man, big the too. The man who is not afraid but does not choose to use his prowess against people is the smartest man there is. is the Amen. most dangerous man around. Amen. Because like you know, it's there to unleash if you have it, but you but you recognize enough. I'm not here to intimidate anybody. If you intimidated by me, that's your own problem. Right. I spit that to him too. I was like, look, man. I don't know what you, what your old lady, what her deal was. It's not my fault. It's not like you came in all like all hoity toity exactly. and like, like trying to huff at her and stuff. I came in with my five letter vocabulary words and just trying to. And, and I think it's a shame that I have to go there because I, I I do feel like it. I, I've spoke a hundred times that my my use of vocabulary and my appearance are in such a way of juxtaposition which is means you look it up which means, which means is that i feel like people are so surprised by the way that i convey myself that they're just like oh it always gives that oh and that's the saddest thing in the world why is it an oh because i said a, a big word <laughs> yeah, but Why I mean, is it an but oh? you've said sometimes too that you dress a certain way to present yourself a certain way and then come and then combat it with like being But why is that even a thing? Well, right. Ex- I agree with you a 1000%, but like but you also like you've said that sometimes you do that. Just, I do do it on purpose. Right. Exactly. I know it exists, so, like, but I hate so, like, that so, like, it's people a thing. see you and they'll be like they immediately have a connotation and then yeah. you start speaking and they're like and then they go, "Oh." It, but like it's cuz I forced the O. But it's a social experiment in a way. Yeah, because you're like I'm gonna dress in a way that you would assume something about me that is not a, you should assume about anyone, yeah. and then when, and then you're like, boom! I'm pro- I'm breaking stereotypes. Not all heroes wear capes, James. I know, dude, right? <laughs> Some of them wear Timberlands. <laughs> <laughs> all right, on the next episode. <laughs> Some of them wear Timberlands. <laughs> uh, but that's all the time we have for today's episode. Please make sure to like and subscribe. If you've already done that. Call all your friends. Everybody's hanging out at home. But for Jonas, and TNT Dynamite. catch you on the next one. We. Oh. Oh. Oh.